In this tutorial, I will show you how to web scrape data from Yahoo Finance into Google Sheets. So we'll look at the stock price, the previous close price, the price to earnings, earnings per share, and the dividend data. Then I will also show you how to create links that can directly take you to the subpages on Yahoo Finance for analytics and statistics for a given stock. And finally, I will show you how to import the company information directly into this spreadsheet. So let's get started. First, we will write in the ticker symbol, and let's take 3M as an example. And then we will skip stock price for now because it's more difficult. And then we'll start with the previous close price. And to find that, we'll go to Yahoo Finance. And as you can see up here in the top, we have the previous close price. And the way these tables are structured on the page is that the first one is called table one and the second one is called table two. And we then have column one and column two. So to get the previous close price, we'll have to web scrape the data located in table one, row one, column two. So let's go back to the spreadsheet. So we will write index and then we will write import HTML down here. And we will then use the concatenate function. We will then go back to Yahoo Finance in order to get the web page URL. And we have it here, we'll take from quote and all the way down to the beginning and copy paste that directly into our code here. We will then write a comma and connect it to our ticker symbol here in C4. Next, we will designate that Google Sheets should import data from table one in Yahoo Finance. And here we go. And then it was row one, column two. And then hit enter. And as you can see, now it had loaded in the previous close price, which was $145.2. So let's do the same with the PE ratio. And then we'll go back to Yahoo Finance to see where it's located. So we have the PE ratio here in table two, row three, column two. We'll then go back to the spreadsheet and then we'll just copy paste this into the next row. And then we will change this to table two, row three. And then we'll hit enter and it will load the data into the system. So you can see we have 19.78 which corresponds to the value right here. So the next one will be the earnings per share, which is located in row four. So we'll go back to the spreadsheet and then we'll just copy paste the code again and change this to C4 to call in the ticker. And then we'll just change this row from row three to row four and hit enter. And as you can see, it has now loaded in the earnings per share. So we can do the same with the dividend data, and that is located here in uh, table two, uh, row six, column two. We will then just copy paste the code again and write it here. And then we'll change this to six instead of four to load in the dividend data. And as you can see, it has loaded in both the amount and the percentage yield. So in order to get this split, we will just use the function called split there. Then we'll just write open bracket, close bracket here and end and hit enter. And as you can see, it has now split the dividend data into two columns, one with the yearly payout and one with the percentage yield. As you can see, it's quite easy to get this data exported from Yahoo Finance into the spreadsheet. To get the stock price, we have to do it in a different way. We will use the import XML function here. And then we'll go to Yahoo Finance and then we'll copy the quotation here into our function. Next, we'll make sure it's recognized as text. And then we'll use this symbol to connect it to the stock ticker in C4. And a comma. And then to get the last part, we'll go back to Yahoo Finance. And as you can see here, we have the current price. So we'll right click on that and then push inspect. It will then open this prompt. And as you can see, if we move around it, it will highlight different parts of the Yahoo Finance sheet. So what we're interested in is the stock price. So we will 
right click here and then we will take the copy function and take copy full x path we will then go back to our spreadsheet and copy paste this in and be sure to make copy paste it in these quotation marks to get it as text and we will finalize with a bracket and as you can see now it loads in the current stock price this is really neat so let's see if we can do the same with the company information we will then again use the import xml function and then we will go to yahoo finance and copy the part of the url and we will then make the quotation marks and link it to the ticker symbol here in c4 we will then write a comma and then we'll go to the yahoo finance web page and scroll down until we find the company information we will then right click and push inspect and find the part of the code that is linked to the company information and then we will right click and choose copy and copy full xpath then go back to our spreadsheet and paste it in here and then with quotation marks and the bracket and as you can see now it loads in all the company information about the company the next thing we want to do is we want to create a link that can take us directly to the statistics page on Yahoo Finance for the stock we are looking at. So we will scroll up and find the Yahoo Finance statistic page. And as you can see, this page contains a lot of valuable information about the company's financial situation. In order to create a link that can take us directly to this page, we will copy a part of the URL. And if we go up here, we can take from quote and to the beginning of the URL and we will copy it and then paste it into this field so we will do the quotation marks and paste and again quotation marks we will then again write in this symbol to link it to the C4 stock ticker here you go and to get the final part we will again link this one and we will then choose the key to statistics part of the URL and copy that and again quotation marks and copy it, paste in here and the quotation marks and we will then hit enter and now it has created this link so we can try to click on it and it should take us directly to the company's statistic page as you can see here we can then try to do the same for the analysis page and the analysis page contains information about the growth estimates of the company which could be quite nice to look at when you analyze a stock. In order to create this link, we'll go back to our spreadsheet. We will then copy paste this link into the field below and go again back to the Yahoo Finance page and copy paste analysis. And we will then just replace key statistics with analysis. And then we will change C5 to C4 to get our ticker symbol. And this should create a link directly to the analysis page. So let's see if it works. And it does work so that is really neat so again we have the analysis page here and we can then go back to our spreadsheet and then we can try to change the ticker symbol to let's take a intel for instance intc and you can see that all the data is then uploaded we have the company information for intel down here and we have the links and let's see if they also work and take us to the statistics page and we now have a quick link to get to the financial data of Intel. The same is the case with the analysis part. So if we click here, it will take us directly to the analysis page for Intel. So let's go back to our spreadsheet. The downsides with scraping data from Yahoo Finance is that it only works for US stocks. So for instance, try BMW, which is a German stock. You can see that now it cannot load any of the data and neither the company information. And if we check a Danish stock, Novo Nordisk, you'll see that it does not work either. It cannot load the data. And now it's loading and nothing happens. But Novo Nordisk is also listed on the New York Stock Exchange. So if we try to write that ticker in instead, which is NVO, you'll see that now it can load the data and also the company information. In order to also have the possibility to get financial data for European stocks, I have created a stock screener. This stock screener scrapes financial data from several web pages and combines them into a functional stock screener that works for both US stocks and European stocks.
This stock screen is available on my Patreon page together with other tools for stock analysis and portfolio tracking. I will now quickly demonstrate this tool for you. Here we have the final stock screener. As you can see, we have the possibility to write in a stock ticker. I have chosen 3M as an example. We then have a part of the screener that works for both US listed stocks and European stocks, where it imports data from Google Finance and Market Watch. And to the right, we have a graph of the last 365 days. And this is actually interactive, so you can just write in another time span, for instance, 1000 days, where it will just load the data from the last 1000 days. We then have performance from 5 days, 1 month, 3 months, the year to date, and 1 year. And if we then go down to the bottom here, we have data from Yahoo Finance and FISVIS. And as you can see, we have the price to earnings ratio, earnings per share, the analyst target price, and also the forward PE ratio and the price to sales and price to book. And in the last column here, we have, for instance, dividend data. On the left, we have the links we created in the tutorial, which will take us directly to Yahoo Finance, key statistics and analysis subpages. And finally, we have the company information, where you can read all about the company you're interested in. So now I'd like to demonstrate that this stock screener actually also works for European stocks. So let's try to write BMW into the stock ticker here. And as you can see, it loads the data, but nothing is loaded down here below because the stock is not exchanged on the New York Stock Exchange. On the other hand, financial data is loaded up here because it's taken directly from Google Finance and Market Watch. So let's try to do another one. Let's take Novo B, which is listed on the Danish Stock Exchange. And as you can see, it can load data up here where we take the data from Google Finance and Market Watch. But nothing is loaded in the lower part of this stock screener, as Novo B is not listed on the US Stock Exchange. But Novo Nordisk is listed on the US Stock Exchange under the ticker NVO. So when you write that into the stock screener, you can see that now it can load the company information and all the company's financial data. I think this stock screener is really easy to use and it can give you a quick overview of a stock's performance. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel in order to get more content like this in the future. And until then, have a nice day.